It's Wednesday, April 11th, 2012. I'm Alex Jones. This is InfoWars Nightly News. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, green fascism claims another victim. The revealing story of a man terrorized to death by local Agenda 21 property seizure. Then, the movement to impeach Obama gains steam. Sean Stone presents a cogent report on the urgency of firing the puppet in charge. Also, the U.S. Army is taking the Fukushima fallout seriously. Are you? And Alex meets with Gerald Salente about the race war being created by the lamestream media. It's a cop-out. It's, it's covering up and what they do again in every declining economy is they pit people against each other. It, that's what we're looking at over here. All that and more. We take you now to the InfoWars studio and Alex Jones. One more item that we didn't mention in the coming up is the fact that the city of Austin shut down traffic for more than five hours today and purposefully pushed one of the biggest police motorcades or presidential motorcades in history. You would have thought Franklin Delano Roosevelt had died. They purposefully, during rush hour, sent a giant police motorcade with departments from all over the state and asked people to pull over on the other side of the road in respect and shut the city down. School buses got their hours and hours late after school. A total disaster. In fact, gridlock traffic is still ongoing. And we are breaking some news on this. It turns out they purposefully routed it more than 60 miles out of the way to send it through the most traffic highways, not in Texas, but in the country, I-35 and others. Bottom line, here is the synopsis of this report you're about to see. This was a public relations stunt on the back of a dead police officer who is a hero who signed up to try to protect and serve. The government took their motorcade overall 70, 80, maybe even 100 miles, depending on how you look at it, south of Austin through the most busy streets there are, blocking the roads and shutting the city down with people with American flags and Mexican flags and the rest of it, took them south and then west close to 100 miles total out of the way, instead of going to San Angelo, which is northwest. You see, notice that's going south. And they just did this, and they said days before, there's going to be some traffic, but he deserves it. Okay, if that's the way to his funeral, or to where he's being buried, but don't go from the funeral service to where he's being laid to rest, and, and, and say, what's a route where we can totally shut things down? See, that's North Austin. And the route that MapQuest and Google shows is almost 100 miles. Different variants are 75 to 100 miles out of the way. They went south, show them that, way south, and then way around to block traffic. This is incredible. Talk about showing everybody who's boss and acting like, well, an officer got killed serving you, so we'll just shut the city down. And most people didn't even know this was happening. I heard talk radio going, shut up. So what if your kids aren't getting home? So what if you're lost or cars are breaking down in wrecks? Because people went crazy. So what if the busiest highway in the country uh, is shut down? Just get used to it. You hate the officer. And people waving American flags. This is America. It's not like the foreign enemy is the American people and you shut down traffic and show everybody who's boss. And the Austin police chief was reportedly saying, get used to it. You know, we'll shut traffic down if we want. Okay. Why not just shut all traffic down when a cop gets killed for like, say, six weeks? Just shut all cars down, and our firstborn can be sacrificed, our child. We'll bring our firstborn down to the police station. You can beat their brains out with golf clubs, set it with tasers out on the highway somewhere, and, and we'll say, here's my child. Kill them. And they'll just like, all right, boom, boom, boom. Well, that's a sacrifice for us. I mean, that's the level of absurdity here. How about have, for respect, circle the earth. Just for endlessly, every cop that dies anywhere. Just have treaties where trains just go 24-7 with their body. Show respect. Send the body to Houston during drive time. Block the highways. Send it to Dallas. Block the highways. San Antonio. 
It's like, oh, that's that cop got killed 20 years ago. Hold on, the city shut down. His 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 car is coming here. This is what the city of Austin did. It was shut down the traffic for almost five hours. I'm going to be honest with you too. Here in closing, I wasn't even going to cover this today, even though my wife was stuck in traffic, desperate to get our son for two hours, and I almost had to leave. Well, actually, I tried, and the highway was shut down. I couldn't. I just couldn't get to my son. To be technical, I tried to leave and do it, but couldn't. Don't like to admit I'm pathetic here, because they shut the city down. And I came back, and I said, oh, whatever. It's a dead police officer. You know, I'm sure that they didn't mean to. And then I started thinking, wait, the police chief was like, there's going to be traffic. He deserves it. If you're driving in the other side of the highway and see it, pull off in respect. And then I heard talk radio attacking people that were upset they couldn't get to their kids. And then I went, wait a minute, San Angelo's northwest of Austin. And I said, go to MapQuest, go to Google. And I was like, it's 70 to 100 miles out of the way. There's the route MapQuest gives you. Why did they do that? And it was a huge PSYOP. That's the point, is they chose to shut the city down to grandstand and say, look at us. I mean, talk about drama queening. I mean, now anytime a cop gets killed, are they just going to shut everything down? Like 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 we did it? Like, like it's our fault? A hundred and something years ago, there weren't even cops in this country, except for folks to go after fugitives. Once they'd done something, citizens dealt with it. I mean, I'm sick of it, and I'm sad the cops did. They don't talk about the guy that killed him was hopped up on psychotropic drugs, this scourge of death. You know, the guy kills 18 kids over there in Afghanistan. Ain't gonna talk about that? No, no, no. You don't care about the cops either. Their pension fund, their dollars being devalued. They're drinking sodium fluoride. When they die of cancer from all this stuff, nobody cares. Yeah, that's the rest of the story. All right, that's it. Yeah, there's the, uh, I mean, there's this epidemic of psychotropic drugs. 110,000 U.S. troops are now on these. And, and the insert it admits it causes people to go haywire and kill people. And they'll just use that to take our guns here domestically when troops go crazy and blame the rest of our military heroes for it. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm sick of it. Okay. So coming up, we'll look at that. But first, Infowars.com, in association with Sean Stone, has uh, produced a video that's a true grassroots movement against tyranny, modeled after the globalist artificial grassroots movement, Coney 2012. It's Impeach Obama 2012. The video was just released four or five hours ago. It's already gone super viral across the web and it's posted at InfoWars.com in the red link right now. So please help get that out to everyone. In fact, there's a quote at the top of the article. We can only win by launching Impeach Obama 2012. Whether or not we fully impeach him, we are committed to rebuking these unconstitutional and criminal power grabs and are determined to take the case to the court of public opinion. Alex Jones, and it goes through the incredible public crimes that violate the Constitution and law on its face. We'll be playing that video here uh, for the break before we go to Gerald Salente, who is coming up. Moving on to our next story, we've had dozens of astronauts, including many from the Apollo missions, on top of 50-plus NASA scientists coming out and saying that NASA's climatologist needs to stop endorsing books that call for poisoning the water supply to reduce population and things like that, and saying that stop using their names to push carbon taxes and basically lining the pockets of Al Gore and Barack Hussein, the New World Order puppet, uh, Obama. So a very, very interesting report there as the so-called consensus, we were told, by Al Gore, who's a congenital liar, uh, implodes and as their frauds are exposed. So certainly very exciting uh, on that front as justice and reality begins to come to the fore. Now continuing here, we're, we've sent reporters to Georgia and they'll be reporting tomorrow on the radio and on the nightly news. We've sent two reporters to Roswell, Georgia, just outside Atlanta, to cover the, the man who was mysteriously killed 
And then the same government trying to take his property for an Agenda 21 eco zone says he blew himself up. Just like, I guess, the Davidians blew themselves up. We learned later it was the federal government. Uh, so we're going to be covering this, but it's an incredible example of Agenda 21 and land grabbing. They couldn't beat him in court to get his property and his farm, so they uh, got him the other way. And, uh, well, it's another victory by the predatory government against the American people. Speaking of predatory government, it uses our money and our energy to fund $2 trillion in defense. And Homeland Security is just the military industrial complex run by Goldman Sachs and MF Global and others absorbing America. And you know last year they launched autonomous drones that operate on their own and kill people in any country they want without declarations of war because Obama says he's God. Well, DARPA seeks robot enthusiast, and you can win a $2 million prize. The globalists know how to get the commoners to give them the inventions. They want the technology for an autonomous drones and ground robots, who of course will run checkpoints and other things, right out of movies like RoboCop, where the bankers bankrupt the city of Detroit, which they've now done in reality, and put giant armored robots on the streets menacing the public. I give you RoboCop 2. Things will be a lot quieter with this boy around. That thing is a kick! Shifting away from robots to radiation, the Army's own internal reports show that they believe the still melting down Reactor 4 could be 85 or more Chernobyls. Chernobyl, the U.N. estimates, has killed a million people since 1986 from its radiation. And so one of the reactors, they've already melted down five of the six, but four could completely melt down and be the equivalent, because it's so big, of 85 Chernobyls. But the Army and the media that it controls are not telling you, this is the bankers' military now, to get potassium iodide pills. No, they're just stockpiling it for themselves. Here's the headline at Infowars.com. Army stockpiles anti-radiation pills to protect against Fukushima fallout. Defense Logistics Agency cites ongoing crisis in Japan as reason behind bulk purchase uh, in case Reactor 4 completely melts down to be able to take care of the Army personnel uh, in that whole situation, which is fine, but how about the public? Okay, now let's get into something similar to radiation, GMO, genetic death. Monsanto, they gave you Asian orange and other little goodies, who's come out with dozens and dozens of GMO crops that in the major studies sterilize the rodents in many cases and cause organ failure, but they're just mammals. I mean, we're not mammals, so it's not an issue. I mean, you don't test stuff on rats to see what it does to humans because their anatomy is so similar and their physiology and metabolic system. Oh, I guess they do test them on rats because it's similar. Well, but Monsanto cares about us, so everything's fine. Explosive Monsanto knowingly poison workers causing devastating birth defects. In developing news piece just unleashed by Courthouse Newswire, Monsanto is being brought to court by dozens of Argentinian tobacco farmers who say the biotech giant knowingly poisoned them with herbicides and pesticides and subsequently caused devastating birth defects. Well, they did that around their headquarters in the U.S. They did that with our troops, but they're not doing that now. I mean, these are nice people. After all, and another article about Monsanto, Poland announces complete ban on Monsanto genetically modified maize. And they're coming out just saying, don't even try it. And uh, they break down the fact uh, that uh, in, in different studies, GMO has been connected to these health problems. And so they are completely uh, banning that in their country. Now, I want to give you the daily quote now. And then we will get to uh, our local story that has national and international import dealing with the paralyzation of the city of Austin uh, as part of a PSYOP PR stunt that I think is going to backfire pretty nastily. Um, but uh, that's coming up in a moment. First off, George Washington. Firearms are second only to the Constitution in importance. They are the people's liberty teeth. And that, of course, was the terrorist, according to Homeland Security, George Washington, enemy of America. George Soros, on the other hand, is the true father of America in Al Gore, man, bear, pig, parlance, half man, half bear, half pig.
You're not looking at a funeral for a head of state or perhaps a fallen president. You're not looking at the arrival of the Martian ambassador to Austin, Texas, where we produce my syndicated radio show and the nightly news. No, that's just a few hours ago. My wife couldn't get to where my son was at to pick him up after a sporting event for several hours. The entire city was paralyzed. School buses picking up children for more than two hours late. Car wrecks happened all over the city. When Obama has come to town and locked things down, people have complained. I have seen a lot of presidential motorcades. This was 10 times the disaster that those are. What was it for? A slain police officer, Jaime Padron, who was shot in the neck late last week by someone hopped out of their mind on a psychotropic drug, Xanax. And did the Austin Police Department point out that they know full well that almost all the major school shootings, uh, the sergeant shooting people in Afghanistan, in almost all these cases, they're on Paxil, Prozac, Xanax, psychotropics that put them into the state. The guy that shot the cop, he had no criminal record. He'd never been in trouble. He was a computer programmer. He was stumbling around acting weird in a Walmart. He went there, his roommate said, to get his Xanax prescription, had a chemical imbalance, murdered this peace officer. And cops have a rough job. Uh, it's a dangerous profession. Overall, I appreciate police. But let me say this. I heard the Austin police chief on the radio saying, if you don't like the traffic, you mean the complete shutdown of the city at rush hour, just too bad. And you see, that's what this was all really about, a giant exercise of power. And we're going to break some news here for you. That's the route given by the Austin Police Department, as you can see, their source, Austin Police, to the Austin American Statesman from yesterday's paper. And up in North Austin, almost in Round Rock, they had his memorial today. And it left at 1 o'clock and wasn't out of Austin until after 5 you heard me right, four plus hours. Uh, Austin already has some of the worst traffic in the country. It shut the city down because the police chief also told people that when they saw the parade on the other side of the road to A, pull off and show respect. So citizens showed up everywhere to block traffic and pull off and have car wrecks to do this. A total disaster. I guarantee you, if they would have asked this slain officer, do you want us to shut traffic down for four or five hours in Austin and cause wrecks and all this? For your memory, he would have said no. But wait, it gets worse. I had a bad feeling uh, today when um, I began to get this news. My wife called me panicking because she was stuck in traffic for hours. Uh, people were running out of gas. People were wrecking in front of her. Pan I mean, it was the entire city was shut down. This was like something out of a movie. Uh, they called that thing out in California, Carmageddon, when they had to fix a bridge. This wasn't a stinking bridge and half of L.A. shut down for a day. This was th three of the major roads. But sad issue. I always give you the key news at the end. Here is the breaking news. I said, wait a minute. This guy was going to San Angelo. That's northwest of Austin. Why did they drive southwest? And then I went, wait a minute, do a map quest and see how it routes you. And it turns out there's almost 70 miles difference. He's in North Austin. It routes you on the toll road with almost no traffic. You can drive 80 miles an hour on it. Right through country, major you know, country highways, right to San Angelo. That's the route that MapQuest, there on screen, gives you from that church in North Austin, far North Austin, actually on the edge of Round Rock most busy stretch of highway in the United States, I-35. How did they route it? This is incredible. They routed it south down I-35, which is, 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 is bumper to bumper in the middle of the day. And down 71, where my wife was going to pick my son up, panicking, stuck in traffic for hours, about to run out of gas, cars cutting in front of her, wrecks everywhere. She said it was like road warrior. Okay, uh, total shutdown. There's the route. Straight shot on a toll road and then a major highway through the country. No one out there to his hometown. This fallen hero. 
They did this as a psyop stunt. It's one thing that Bill Clinton sits on the tarmac over and over again and holds all the planes up for an hour. That's terrible. It's another thing if Obama comes to town or Bush and shuts things down for an hour. They, keep, they come all the time here. It's a capital city. Maybe 30, 40 minutes, you know, maybe 10 cars, 20 cars. Folks, this was police from all over the state. The motorcade was reportedly up to seven miles long. And they shut the state police, sh barricaded, blockaded, paralyzed, shut down the highway. And this went on from one o'clock until past five, so four and a half hours or more. And it's still going on. They're sending the motorcade. That'd be like if I wanted to go to Dallas driving to San Antonio. Well, you guys who don't uh, live in Texas, will the crew please pull up just a map, a uh, highway map of Texas? This would be the equivalent if I was going to go to Dallas that's four hours or 200 miles north of Austin. This would be like driving to San Antonio an hour and a half south just for fun and then turning around and going back. This would be like if I wanted to go to England, I wouldn't go east. I'd get on a plane and fly to China first and then fly across Russia to England. They call it butt backwards. And then I heard the local news radio going, shut up, traitors. Oh, I haven't gotten the rest of the story. It gets even crazier as a psyop. We told you they'd shut down some roads. And callers going, but I can't get my kids. And the host going, shut up, you knew it. And callers calling in sycophantically saying, how dare you anti-American people be against this hero? Because then I start listening. My wife's stuck in traffic. She doesn't know what to do. She's running out of gas. She's, she's, she's totally stuck. Again, show that map. Show that map. San Angelo is northwest. They sent them south 50 miles and then had them turn to the west. So the total south about 25 and then another 25 on the map says it's 50 miles out of the way that way. And then another, actually I was wrong because I looked at the map a minute ago. It's another, what, 60 miles from B Cave right there. How far is it to San Angelo? Because you got 20 for something miles, another 20. So that's 40 plus. And then I think actually it's like 60 from there. So I'm sorry, I, I estimated wrong. 100 miles out of the way. Let's go 100 miles out of the way. There's Texas. This would be the equivalent if I wanted to go from Austin to Dallas, driving to San Antonio first and then back. Or, or how about if I wanted to go to Dallas? How about I drive to Mexico first and then go back? Because, you know, to show respect for the officer, how about we shut down every road in Texas? I remember a few years ago, a dog got shot, a cop dog in Houston and they shut down part of the highway and had thousands of police on taxpayer money. Here's another thing I want to say. I saw police driving real fast and recklessly this morning. I kind of enjoyed it. I kind of got behind them and went a little faster because they weren't, I didn't notice they weren't writing tickets. They, I see police everywhere just freaking out. We've finally been attacked. First cop in decades killed in Austin, you know, that wasn't killed in a car wreck or whatever. Uh, my gosh, and, and, and everybody's out to get us. This whole culture of paranoia. If you want to stop getting everybody killed, how about you look at Xanax and Prozac on their own inserts, admitting it causes violent outbreaks? But wait, but wait, there's more. I sent Rob Jacobson to try to get footage of this after I learned my wife was stuck in traffic. He couldn't get there in 30 minutes on major side roads like Old Torf and Congress. Those were shut down. You understand, you shut down I-35, you shut down 71, you shut down these other roads, everybody spills into the other little roads, it was gridlock. He couldn't get five, it's not even five, it's like from our office, it's what, a mile and a half to where that motorcade was? On a, He couldn't get a mile and a half in 30 minutes. And, and he, you know, he had the high def camera there there were Mexican flags everywhere because this guy was Hispanic. Well, how about an American flag if you're Hispanic? There were American flags. It's on the news. We're taping the news. What shut things down was the police chief saying, show respect. This was insane. This caused a major disaster, wrecks all over the place. I mean, I'm talking about giant highway shutdown, cars overheating, I-35 shut down for three of the five hours. Shut down. The number one interstate in the country and the busiest spot in the country is the Austin to San Antonio corridor. You call that respect to this guy who got killed by some Xanax head 
and, and it was on the news. Mexican flags everywhere. I, you know, I, that's kind of an insult to Americans who fought in the military happen to be Hispanic or the 30 plus percent of the Texas revolutionaries that helped found Texas to say, if you're Hispanic, wave Mexican flags. Like if you're Hispanic, you're a Mexican. What about all the other Hispanics from the dozens of other Latin American countries? Uh, again, it shows the citizens in this form of this form of hysteria, wanting something patriotic, wanting it's like when I was on an airplane flying back uh, from out west a few months ago, and there was a dead military serviceman underneath it, and I sat next to the uh, MP who was bringing him back, and they made the airplane sit there while they got the body off, and everybody then got off the plane, and in awe as they loaded, there was hundreds of police, and they acted like it was the most patriotic thing in the world. What's patriotic is to not steal the death benefits of our military men and women, as the government's done. What's patriotic is not to inject them with deadly vaccines. The point is... The globalists know how it's all about the surface. It's all about the cover story. It's all about making you feel good. It's all about packaging and not the substance. They treat the troops like absolute garbage. Homeland Security lists them as the number one enemy of the homeland, which is the banker receivership arm. And the Austin police would purposefully, because they're not stupid, with the state police, shut down the capital city for almost five hours to show respect. They took him during rush hour through the middle of everywhere, shutting down the major highway and the, and, and the news saying, if you see him on the other side, out of respect, pull off. Bedlam, car wrecks. Can you imagine? A million plus people metro, million 300,000 metro. I mean, this was, see on the other side? Total traffic. And then these people with American flags everywhere. I mean, that's right by our office right there, that photo they just showed. And this went on and on and on and on. And there's my son in a field. But the good news was most of the other parents couldn't make it there. So there's my son standing there in a field for two hours, and it's like, shut up, Jones! I mean, I heard the local news. They were like, you do not question this. You don't question when the TSA sticks their hands down your pants. You don't question when the IRS takes somebody's house with no due process. Patriotism is sucking government boots. But it doesn't mean actually caring about even the government enforcers. It means bowing down to the image and the idea of it. You know, when the feds kill some cop that exposed their narcotics trafficking, it's all kept real quiet. But when they tell you to get all cry-eyed and they shut your city down, it's an exercise of power to say, you're the enemy. We can shut this whole city down anytime we want. And have people come out and worship and beg. And you're like, but that town's northwest. Why'd you go south? I mean, it's up there north, perfectly on a toll road out to the country. No traffic, perfect ride out. They wanted this big grand thing saying, look, one of our officers got killed. We're heroes. You're all scum. That's what it was about, a bunch of grandstanding. I heard the head of the police union on the radio last week going, let me just say how many families are not going to need for nothing. And he started pulled the tape and started going, because <laughs> it was like, this is going to be our martyr. This is going to be about us being heroes. But meanwhile, when the police SWAT team in the wrong house and shoot a toddler, it's not even news. Meanwhile, when the government ships the drugs in, this is all a psyop opportunity. Don't let a good crisis go to waste. And using the death of this poor police officer who was gunned down in cold blood to make the whole corrupt system look like heroes. And Mayor Lee Leffingwell was part of this, shutting the city down. This is outrageous. But the Queen of England... When I was in England a few years ago, the, 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 the tour bus drivers were pointing out, and I looked it up, it was true. She shuts different roads down every day in London just to exercise her power. And it's an ancient form of exercise of power. Hey, we're up here in North Austin, right on the road, able to take him right to his burial place. We're not doing that. Why didn't they just take, take it on, you know, down to San Antonio, wait till tomorrow till rush hour, block traffic there, drive down to Houston. Hey, five o'clock traffic. Driving circles around Houston on taxpayer money. Oh, let's go up to Dallas. Show respect. Show, oh, let's just drive over to Oklahoma City. Drive in circles. Do you get the magnitude of this information? I mean, show them again. That's the route they took. That's Austin to, to South Austin and then over west and then all the way around. 
it's got to be 100 miles out of the way. Instead of, oh, what does Google Maps, what does MapQuest and every other map system show? Boom. It shows you go directly from where that church is to that toll road, 45 north, right to that major state highway, right there, straight shot. And I just guesstimated earlier, I said 60, 70 miles of the way. It looks like over 100. And I'm going to say it again, you show respect. They should have driven that officer all the way down to the southern tip of Chile, where you can wave at penguins in Antarctica, and then turned it back, and then driven it to Russia, and blocked all their roads, and then driven it to China, and just here he comes, forever, circling the earth, every road, every, oh, here comes the officer, blocked the road. <laughs> I mean, this is so sick. You're not about to stop the school shootings, people on Prozac in every case, or Luvox, or all these other drugs, or Paxil. You don't want to stop it. Or the troops, you got 10% or more, 110,000 troops on psychotropics. Oh, let's take folks that have been to five, six tours of murder and combat and give them a drug that makes them psychopathic killers. Here, let's not talk about that. No. In fact, I think you just shut the entire city down. We should have a 10-month strike. Everybody just sit in your homes and rot, just worshiping. Oh, an officer was killed. It's about government using his death to make themselves look like victims. They're vampires sucking the blood out of this poor dead police officer. Again, these psychic vampires love any big tear-jerking event they can use to manipulate people, and I think it's shameless that they've done this. It is, it is, it is truly disgusting. They picked the most busy route on a computer. That's the busiest route you could pick and shut everything down. And it was on the news going, DPS command is in control, shutting down the roads. If you see them driving, you stop on the other side. And I heard the people calling into the radio, if I see somebody not stopping on the other side, I'm gonna beat the hell out of them. You show respect to that officer. There's any, is it, my wife called me, she said, this is pure fascism. There's American and Mexican flags everywhere and people crying and freaking out. It's just any excuse. Meanwhile, our Bill of Rights and Constitution that make America so great, they're being butchered. Speaking of that, here's our movement to impeach Barack Hussein Obama. Get this video out to everybody. Year. Representative Walter Jones of North Carolina introduced House Resolution 107 into the United States Congress. The resolution states, whereas the cornerstone of the Republic is honoring Congress's exclusive power to declare war under Article 1, Section 8, Clause 11 of the Constitution. Now therefore be it resolved by the House of Representatives, the Senate concurring, that it is the sense of Congress that, except in response to an actual or imminent attack against the territory of the United States, the use of offensive military force by a president without prior and clear authorization of an act of Congress violates Congress's exclusive power to declare war under Article 1, Section 8, Clause 11 of the Constitution. Jones intended his resolution to express the sense of Congress that the use of offensive military force by a president without the prior and clear authorization of an act of Congress constitutes an impeachable high crime and misdemeanor under Article 2, Section 4 of the Constitution. Why does President Barack Obama deserve to be impeached? Here are four reasons. Doing little or nothing at all will result in either, even greater deficits, even greater job loss, even greater loss of income. One, the Obama administration not only endorsed the 2008 bailout policy, the funds from which did not go either to homeowners or for taxpayers' protection, but rather to the consolidation of private banks, many of them in Europe. There was no investment of any meaningful type in the physical economy. There was no protection of the American people, but rather an illegal commitment made on behalf of private banking institutions to commit the American people to paying a debt that the American people did not accrue. The trillions of dollars that were pledged to the private banking sector are backed by the assets belonging to the American people. 
This combines to represent the most clear violation of the principle of the general welfare in the preamble to the Constitution of the United States. I also want to be clear about what we will not be doing. The United States is not going to deploy ground troops into Libya. U.S. boots are reportedly on the ground in Libya. Two, the Obama administration conducted a war in Libya which it claimed it did not conduct with American forces that it claimed were not involved for the purpose of overthrowing and then executing a head of a sovereign state who was held in the custody of insurgent forces financed and militarily supported by the United States, France, Britain, and other NATO countries. This was done despite the fact that the United States was neither attacked nor threatened with attack by the nation of Libya. Only the Congress, not the President, has the authority under the Constitution to declare war. But the Obama administration believes that it has that authority. Do you think that you can act without Congress uh, to and initiate a no-fly zone in Syria without congressional approval? The administration recently asserted that its actions are above the laws of the United States in an exchange between Obama's Secretary of Defense, Leon Panetta, and Senator Jeff Sessions of Alabama. Uh, our, our goal would be to, uh, to seek international permission, and uh, we, would, we would come to the Congress uh, and inform you uh, and determine uh, how best to approach this, uh, whether or not we would uh, want to get uh, permission from the Congress. Uh, I think those are issues we would have to discuss as we decide what to do here. What I heard you say is, we're going to seek international approval and they will come and tell the Congress what we might do. The Obama administration thus does not believe that the Congress has the exclusive power to declare war and accordingly the president should be impeached. Let me welcome uh, Prime Minister Cameron of uh, the United States of New York. Uh, obviously uh, there is an extraordinarily special relationship. Three. The Obama administration sides with the imperial power of Great Britain, and proudly so, in what has been called the special relationship. Through that special relationship, the United States, as a result of the false intelligence advocated by Tony Blair, claimed that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction and conducted a preventive war against Iraq in 2003. Preventive war was declared a crime against humanity by the Nuremberg Statutes of 1947. But now, on March 13th of this year, Barack Obama and David Cameron declare their intention to seek the removal of the Syrian regime of President Bashir al-Assad, a regime that has shown no intent of threatening or attacking the United States Republic. This shows Obama's intent to continue a policy of war, for the commission of which the Nazis were sentenced to death at Nuremberg. If President Obama intends to finance, arm, or in any way militarily support the rebel factions against the president of Syria. He has a constitutional requirement to approach the Congress for a declaration of war. Four, President Obama has committed us as a country to a policy of indefinite warfare, including on American soil. On December 31st, 2011, Barack Obama signed into law the 2012 National Defense Authorization Act which includes provisions that state the Congress affirms that the authority of the President to use all necessary and appropriate force pursuant to the authorization for use of military force includes the authority for the armed forces of the United States to detain covered persons pending disposition under the law of war. When Congress defined such covered persons exempting U.S. citizens from the language, they were rebuked by the Obama administration which told them to remove U.S. citizens from being precluded. Thus, as a result, U.S. citizens can also be detained by the U.S. military indefinitely without due process or civilian trial. This now allows the United States military to arrest and detain without trial American citizens who are deemed enemy combatants. It abrogates the Constitution of the United States in the Fourth, Fifth, and Sixth Amendments the right of the people to be secure in their persons against unreasonable searches and seizures, and that no person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime unless on a presentiment or indictment of a grand jury, and that the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury. All of these rights have been abandoned by the United States under President Barack Obama. Further, 
the president asks the country to believe him when he says that he will not use his power of the executive towards the arrest of U.S. citizens pursuant to the NDAA of 2012. However, the executive branch has already ordered the execution of an American citizen in November of 2011. The Obama administration has already assassinated an American citizen, Anwar al-Awlaki, who was never tried in absentia, but was simply indicted by a secret court, according to the executive branch, who then ordered his assassination, a murder which also included that of his son, a 16-year-old boy, and a family friend. Considering the president's willingness to assassinate American citizens, are we really ready to entrust him with the power to indefinitely detain U.S. citizens in the course of so-called combat? After all, our Constitution promises the trial of all crimes, except in cases of impeachment, shall be by jury, and such trial shall be held in the state where the said crimes shall have been committed. Now is the time. If we choose to surrender our republic to the machinations of dictatorship for fear of external threats, terrorism, and other amorphous enemies, then we do not deserve the republic which was given to us by our forefathers and promised to us based on the pledge that it is a republic of the people, by the people, and for the people. Consequently, as a republic belonging to us, we are not accountable to the president and the Congress. They are accountable to us. And should the president presume dictatorial powers, regardless of the state of war that he may claim we are now in, he must respond to our demands to protect American citizens from unauthorized illegal detention by the military and to annul this National Defense Authorization Act of 2012. And if he does not do so, then he deserves to be impeached immediately. But if we say nothing today, where will we be tomorrow? Ask yourselves, what are you doing in this time of great challenge? What are you doing to unlock minds? Go to Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv for the latest headlines and cutting-edge information. I'm announcing our biggest contest ever. And we're looking for people who love freedom and who want to be all in in the resistance to tyrants. So you say you want to fight the new world order. Why, if you were on the radio, if you were Alex Jones, you'd really kick some globalist ass. Well, here's your chance. We're hiring not one, but two new reporters whose reports are going to be on the radio, whose reports are going to be on the nightly news, who will even anchor the show. If you're ready, here's your chance to step into my shoes and I hope you surpass what I've done. Two winners, $10,000 in prizes, and a shot to be a reporter inside the InfoWars.com command center. We're looking to hire one male reporter and one female reporter. And when you win, you win $5,000. Your video gets seen by hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people on YouTube, and you get put into the very front of the running to be hired as a reporter slash anchor right here in our operation. Do you have what it takes to be the next Info Warrior? The rules are posted below me here and at InfoWars.com. This is a big deal. You know, the globalists are expanding their global empire, but at the same time, the people are waking up all over the world. We've expanded our operations in the last year. We've added the nightly news five nights a week. We're making more special reports. We're reaching 15 million people every week. In a year, I want that to be 30 million. This is your chance to join the team. I want to see what you can do. But a big hint is this. Can your news piece make the news? Does it get people's attention? Does it educate people? Does it open minds? That's more important than being beautiful or speaking with perfect eloquence as an orator. All of that is important, but we're looking for people that have that 
magic spark, that fire of liberty in their heart, because I want you to join our team. I want to give you a launch pad so you can really take off and engage the globalist. And if this works, we'll have contests all the time and we'll continue to build this operation. I'm involved in a talent search looking for people who have the fires of liberty burning in their hearts and their minds. You've got until April 30th to complete your news report and then we'll announce the winners one week later. Are you going to join the info war? Do you have what it takes? It's up to you. All serious entries will be posted on InfoWars.com. So everybody wins. You're getting the message of liberty out, and that's what really matters. But in the final equation, it's not about showing Alex Jones what you got. It's about showing the world and the globalist that no army can stop an idea whose time has come. Join me in the Info War. So you say you want to fight the info war. You say you want to go head up against the new world order. You can do a better job than Alex Jones. I know you can. And here's your chance to prove your metal. enjoy it when the globalists try to poison us and uh, well we resist them via a free market system hello my fellow info warriors alex jones here introducing you to the pro pure family of gravity fed filters now you know that the globalists are filling our water with radioactive isotopes fluoride lead mercury arsenic and one of the few systems that can efficiently and economically remove or reduce down to non-detectable levels, these poisons are gravity-fed filters. And ProPure is the top of the line. Their filters are impregnated with silver, a natural antibiotic. On top of that, they're bigger, so they filter faster. You don't have to prime these the first time you use them. It's amazing. Go to InfoWars.com and click on the shopping cart link uh, to see the entire family of these babies. Now, the fluoride they add to our water is so tiny that most filters can't cut it out. But ProPure has their system that will, again, reduce it to non-detectable levels, almost get all of it out of there. That's also available. And if you look at the different systems they offer, the Pro Pure Big Brush Finish is on a stand, so it's easier on a table or at your restaurant or wherever you have it to go up with a glass or a mug and fill it up. Then there's this big baby right here, the Pro Pure King Large version. Got a lot of different options that come with it. Also, they have the Pro Pure Big, probably one of the best values out there. And of course, it's burnished stainless steel. And then what I use on my RV, something that's great for your hunting cabin or the back porch, is the Pro Pure Traveler. Small and portable, but packs a huge punch, cleans out all that garbage. They also have a glass sight spigot, so you don't have to take the top off and look in the bottom area to see how much water. You can see how fast it's filtering with this optional uh, system. The globalists obviously are hitting us through our water. It's time to take control of our lives. It's time to not give our children and families these poisons. And these systems cut it down to non-detectable levels across the board. ProPure is the name. I only promote what I believe in. And I use ProPure in my home and my office. And I recommend that you check out the information on ProPure at InfoWars.com. We already have the lowest price at InfoWars.com on the ProPure gravity filter system. But when you add in the 10% off when InfoWarriors use the product code WATER at InfoWars.com, nobody can top it. So again, it's a win-win-win. Stop drinking the poison water. Uh, checkmate the globalists when it comes to your health and support InfoWars.com and the work we're doing here. You know, many revolutionaries rob banks and things and kidnap people for funds. We promote in the free market the products we use that are about preparedness. That's how we 
revolution against the New World Order, in our move to restore our constitutional republic and a spirit of 1776 worldwide. Check it out at InfoWars.com. Pro Pure, top of the line, number one, most powerful and effective and economical gravity fed water system in the world. Pro Pure, available, discounted at InfoWars.com. Don't forget product code WATER to save 10%. It's the latest generation, years in development. ProPure is the name. Thing to plug. Uh, Trendsjournal.com. Trendsjournal.com, that's the one we'll plug. Yeah. Is that the lower third we have, Trendsjournal.com, or the other one? Trendsresearch.com will work, right? Yeah, they'll work too. I'll just plug verbally Trendsjournal.com and we'll show Trends Research. Okay, okay here we go, good. guys, let's go. We're recording? It's going to look weird. I'm going to get a haircut and then come back and record the first part. But no one will notice, but whatever. I'm already so ugly. They won't even. All right, you ready? <clears throat> you guys got sound? We're good? Tell me action. That's the way to do this. Action? Okay. We always, always just sit there mumbling. You ready? You ready? Okay. Mm. What is today? That's right. Thank you. Here we go. Welcome back to this Wednesday, April 11th edition, second part of the transmission. We're joined by one of my favorite guests because he has such an amazing grasp on a wide spectrum of issues. Tops Trends forecaster Gerald Salente joins us from TrendsJournal.com. And I've got the waterfront that I want to cover with him. The economy, the latest on MF Global and Corzine not getting in trouble, uh, the move to impeach Obama gaining steam in Congress. Uh, you got all these new Congress people coming out. You got Chuck Norris coming out. I mean, the, the ball's starting to roll and more. The fact that it looks like Mitt Romney is going to be the guy they're going to put in. Talk about a choice between Tweedledee and Tweedledum. We're going to talk about it all with Gerald Salente joining us. Gerald, uh, first, out of the gates, I want to ask you this. The Trayvon Martin situation. We've now confirmed in the Orlando Sentinel that the white supremacists they've got running around there stirring stuff up are admittedly federal informants that work for the federal government. Uh, the new Black Panther Party says kill whites, blood, murder, totally illegal, a call for violence, terroristic threats, racketeering. Uh, they're trying to organize this. They say burn Florida. The feds have said they're not going to do anything to them. The Justice Department's coming in. Uh, and NBC got caught editing tapes to make it look like Zimmerman's racist. Why is the White House trying to start a race war? I mean, they're really trying it. A, do you, do you agree with that? B, why are they doing this? Well, I don't know what why. I don't know the why, but I do know that they jumped on it right away. And what they do, regardless of the administration, is they always jump on hot topics that they could use and twist to their own advantage. And that's what they did with this, with Obama's first statement about if I had a boy, it would look like him, or, you know, words to that effect. You know, has nothing to do with anything. And the fact is, there's violence in this country continually, and I'm sick and tired of hearing what a racist nation America is. Are there racists in this country? Of course there are. But guess what? There are ignorant white people and ignorant black people. Black people are as racist as white people, the ignorant ones of them. But as a nation, this is not a racist nation. If anybody that's not colorblind could clearly see that America elected a black president, how much clearer could it be? Oh, and who's the attorney general? Son of a gun. Guy's skin's a lot darker than mine. Oh, and who's the head of the UN? Boy, she's not a very white shade of white either, is she? So let's stop that this is a racist nation. It's not. What is the administration doing? They do what every administration does. They use events to distract people away from major issues, such as, hey, you have no place to live? You lost your house? Oh, you can't find a job? Oh, you need an operation, but you don't have money for health care? Oh, you just graduated college and you went to one of these diploma mills that they call universities and you own a university degree in worthlessness and you're $80,000 in debt and you can't find a job. Hey, how about Trayvon Martin? Let's go there. That's all this is. It's a cop out. It's, it's covering up 
And what they do again in every declining economy is they pit people against each other. It, that's what we're looking at over here. There's no fa this thing should be out of the news by now. Enough. There are a lot of atrocities going on every day that aren't covered, such as, hey, you want to hear about a one point six billion dollar atrocity? You want to hear about a person that's ruined a lot of people's lives and gets to have dinner with Obama? How about John Corzine of MF Global? How about bringing that into the news? Hey, how about the wars that they're fighting? And guys, every day you read the New York Times, you pick it up and there's a list of dead American soldiers killed because psychopaths sent them there. Oh, that's not important. Let's talk about Trayvon Williams. Martin, excuse me. No, no, I totally agree. And that's why we're forced to cover it and you're forced to cover it to point out it's a distraction. But it, everything is always a, it's a new level though to have NBC editing tapes and to have the president sitting the Justice Department down there and to have the Black Panthers obviously on the federal payroll calling to murder all the whites. I mean, and then not getting in trouble. I mean, they are really desperate is my point with this. Well, it's not, it's a new level, but only to a different degree. Here, try this one for cookbooks and, 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 and fake film. Hey, how about those weapons of mass destruction that Saddam Hussein has? Here, watch Colin Powell. Oh, oh he was black too, wasn't he? Oh, wasn't he the uh, Secretary of State or some high official at that level? Something along yeah, those he was. lines. What was he? Secretary of State, you're right. Yeah, and, and what was he at the UN? showing these little crummy little things about Saddam Hussein and, and how about those aluminum tubes in yellow? And it was a known lie. You know, they claim that steak knife and stuff lied to them or, or, or all these guys. No, it was known lies premeditatedly to the American people. And that's what I'm saying. This is who's running the country. It's at all levels. It's at war. It's at social levels. It's at the economic levels. How much more criminality has to be shoved down the American people's throats before they realize what's happening? And that's why on the cover of the Spring Trends Journal that will be released tomorrow, it's next train to Auschwitz, all aboard. Kiss those calories goodbye because we're in a fascist state. What are people waiting for? You know, I have a, one of the, the, the operations director, the Trends Research Institute, is German. And she tells me this story when she was a young woman, 16 years old, becoming rebellious, of course, living in Germany, of course, and confronting a grandmother and saying, How could you have let, how come nobody stood up and stopped? The, the, the soldiers from taking the Jewish people. How come nobody rose up? And a grandmother said to her, you don't understand. It wasn't one day we woke up and lost all our rights and became a police state. It happened slowly. And then one day, you couldn't speak out anymore. Because if you did, they would take you away and kill you. And that's what's going on in America. And this is just a distraction with this Trayvon Martin. How about the National Defense Authorization Act? How about Obama's executive order that now allows El Presidente of Los Estados Unidos declare martial law over, quote, a potential threat? How long does potential last for? How about indefinitely? And he could take over the farms, the factories, the banks, anything that El Presidente wants to do. Hey, how about that wonderful, wonderful new guideline that big bro over there, uh, Eric Holder, the attorney general, just put into practice, where they're listening to what we're talking about now. Everybody out there, they're watching every keyboard stroke you're making. And let me bring yeah, that up. Let me bring that up, Gerald, because when you talk about next train to Auschwitz, when we show the amazing cover of the uh, upcoming Trends uh, Journal tomorrow, th it's really happening. If you've studied history, you're not doomed to repeat it if you take action. But if you haven't studied it, you are doomed to repeat it, so the adage goes. And it's very true. They're going down the line, every form of tyranny, and five years ago, they'd say, we never spy without warrants. Now, Congress says, we want to know about this new NSA base. And the president says, shut up. We, hey, you can't launch a war with us, uh, without us authorizing it. Shut up. They are openly engaged in every form of tyranny you can imagine.
Why do you think a month ago the head of the CIA would come out, uh, General Petraeus, and betray the republic and say, we're watching and listening to everything. The Fourth Amendment isn't what it used to be. They're openly announcing, we're listening to you, we'll secretly arrest you, we'll launch wars, the TSA is going to fondle your wife. I mean, it really is going quickly towards the total tyranny, because once the crooks realize they can do anything, the sky's the limit. I want you to speak to that, why they're throwing it in our face, A, but then if you've got five to seven million guns being sold a month and people in national surveys saying they don't trust the government, I don't think this is going to go the way of Soviet Russia or Nazi Germany. I mean, I'm, this is going to turn into a bloodbath. Well, you're also forgetting the other one, the new Supreme Court ruling of which the Obama administration was a friend of the court that now allows them to strip search anybody if you get thrown into jail, even, you know, on a, on a minor charge. No, you're not convicted. You're just thrown in jail. Oh, and by the way, I wonder if, you know, they'd have a, if they'd strip search Chelsea or, or Obama's kids or the Supreme Court justices or it's just for us. Why are they doing all this, Alex? It's very simple why. They're breaking us down. They're humiliating us at every level, and they know that the global financial system is under collapse. Look what's going on in Europe. They just dumped $1.3 trillion in, of euros to give to the banks at virtually interest-free so that they could stay afloat because they've been run on the banks in Europe. And they need the banks to buy the worthless bonds. Now that's running out. The bond prices in Spain are going back up. They have revolts in the street every day. The robberies and criminality going on in Greece, it's running rampant. Um, we're getting reports back continually. It's like Argentina 12 years ago. People are dumping their kids out on the streets, starving, cholera, and diseases have come back. The bankers are a plague, and the debt is pretty much all the bankers. It's incredible. So they're basically getting us ready for total martial law. And speaking of the strip search case, remember they said, we'll never give you a ticket for no seatbelt. Then it was, we'll never arrest you. Now they're telling police on record, arrest people for no seatbelt because they want to get everybody in the system. Your wife, who's never been arrested, never had another man touch her, they take their panties off at the Austin jail now and actually go in to their butt crack and touch their vagina now. And the women break down and cry at these jails around the country. I've seen some of the jail footage. And they'll beat them, in some cases, to death if the women squeal and cry. And again, it's total pervert training. It's, it's Auschwitz training. That's exactly it. And that's the reason for the cover. And I love all of the, you know, every time, I was, I was at a party the other night, and I, and I mentioned to about the, the, uh, the new Supreme Court ruling and how Verrilli, the Solicitor General for Obama, was the friend of the court, was arguing the case in favor of the strip search. And the woman said to me, and she's married to a very famous guy, she said, I don't believe you. I said, what do you mean you don't believe me? You think I'm making this up? She said, no, I, I refuse to believe you. I like Obama. And that's what they say. Oh, I like Obama. Oh, you like Obama? Great, spread your legs, bend over. They're the friend of the court. Welcome to Auschwitz. Well, look at the airport. They're, I mean, that's when the strip searches started under Obama. The old lady's getting strip searched. I mean, that's another question. I see the so-called left in this country, other than people you know, out there uh, who are suing Obama over NDAA, some of the journalists that are out there who have called themselves liberal, the rest of them smile and think it's cute. Torture's now cute because Obama does it. It's bad when Bush did, but now it's cute. When Obama launches wars, it's cute. Uh, when he hires more lobbyists and arrests journalists and whistleblowers, it's cute. I mean, who are these liberals? Liberals are liars. They, they're intelligent enough to know what is true and what is false and how they've been shafted but they don't have the courage the dignity nor the self-respect to admit to it so what they do instead and you pointed it out it's perfect if bush was in office pulling off what obama's pulling off the liberals would be screaming bloody murder they would be they would be on top of bush calling him every name but 
You know what they do when you tell them the facts and they finally admit to it? They'll say, I wonder why he did it. You wonder why he did it. Why did Jack the Ripper do what he did? Why is it important? By their deeds, you shall know them. So what we're looking at here, Alex, and this is what this Trends Journal is really about. If people don't stand up, speak out, take action, and find courage within them, it's the next train to Auschwitz. It's happening in front of us. You're telling the story about what's going on in the jail, the humiliation. You could, you know, with this, this Supreme Court ruling, they, they strip search somebody for not having an audible bell on a bicycle. And they found that now to be constitutional. Constitutional in where? In what? Orwell could not have dreamt up a better scenario than what's happening in the United States. Big bro is there, and he's watching you. So I bring in the other question. What happens, it's like a chemistry experiment where you pour two things together, there's an explosion. In all these national surveys, I've seen five of them the last few months, people say, we're worried about collapse. We're worried about the government being corrupt. We don't trust the government. They're buying five to seven million guns a month, a total record. They're saying, I don't like the government. I mean, don't you think the system realizes that? Yeah, they do. They're buying they a bulletproof mobile checkpoint uh, pillboxes. They're buying hundreds of millions of bullets and machine guns and armored vehicles. So I guess that's what they think. These bureaucrats think they're just going to have a war with us. That's right. They know. They know that this thing is collapsing. The financial system is under collapse. It's as clear as that. The reason why they couldn't bail out MF Global, the eighth largest bankruptcy in U.S. history, at a lousy $1.6 billion is because they don't have the money. And anybody knows that when they try to go to a bank like I have and try to withdraw a sizable sum, they will not give it to you without torturing you first. There, the system is under collapse. They're shrewd enough and unprincipled enough to know that, and they're doing everything they can now to keep the people in place as it collapses. What's going to happen? My belief is, and the scenario that we're putting forth in the Trends Journal is war. The same scenario. The crash of 1929, the Great Depression, currency wars, trade wars, world wars, the panic of 08, the Great Recession slash Depression. There's a depression in Spain, a depression in Greece, a depression in Italy, a depression in, in Ireland, a depression in Romania, in Hungary. There's depression in the world. America's in a depression. There's no jobs being created worth, worth that could give you a living wage. So few of them are. What comes next? Currency wars. Dun, da, da, da. It's happened. It's going on. You just saw the new the BRIC meeting, the fourth BRIC meeting, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and now South Africa. The fourth one. What are they calling for? A new world order, a new world bank, breaking away from the dollar. Everybody can see what's going on. The, the, the president of Brazil is screaming about how their country is being ruined by the currency war and the trade war. They tie together. Now it's world war. The world is at war. What are these demonstrations where 80% of a country is closed down? It's war. What are the, what's going on That's in right. Syria, in Yemen, in, in Afghanistan? And next, the war is going to be... Iran, and that's when it, that will get the people's mind off the economic problems and all of the social inequities that have been dumped upon us. That's right. The mega banks raping and robbing us publicly want to start wars internationally. Trayvon Martin race wars domestically. They want to play us off against each other. While Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Bank of America, Citibank, Wells Fargo, and a handful of others publicly, their own executives quit and say, we hate our clients, we call them scum, we rip them off, and it's just out in the open, more, 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 as our tax money is used to launch drones, surveillance, uh, to rape and slaughter, not to protect and serve. The good news is the military I talked to is waking up, most police are waking up, but uh, I tell you, I fear uh, for the future of this country and this world because it is such a crazy time.
I want to raise a case here. We'll put it on screen. We've been showing, by the way, the amazing graphics in the upcoming journal that comes out tomorrow at trendsjournal.com. But if you go to the front page of infowars.com, again, we'll put that on screen. State seizes property under green zoning laws, terrorizes man to death. Uh, Gen 21 eco-fascism bears teeth. And this is in... Uh, Georgia, Roswell, Georgia, outside Atlanta. The guy had won a whole bunch of court cases. He lived in the edge of the country. They'd, they'd annex the area and said he couldn't have his chickens in the backyard. Uh, and then uh, they, I mean, it's a long story, but then they showed up and then the, his house blew up. And, and they're saying he killed himself. But I mean, my point is they had already had the land set aside as part of a UN green zone. Not that it was ever going to actually you know, be for the environment. It's just this is the new fake enviro movement to ignore all the real environmental issues. They create a wicked, twisted uh, counterfeit of it and use it everywhere to take land, take property. It's happening here in Austin. And more and more, I see government now driving people to their deaths. There was even another Bloomberg article today about record suicides and and, 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 and over taxes. People just can't pay them, but the bureaucrats don't care. They like the shops closing. They love it. And, and, and uh, all the government payrolls going up and all this. I mean, this is crazy, Gerald. What do you think of uh, uh, these cases we're seeing? I'm sending some reporters there. They'll be reporting from Georgia tomorrow on this. Now where the towns, uh, you know, if they can't take your property, they just burn you out like Waco. That's right, just like Waco. And this is what happens in a third world country. And that's where America is going to. You look at all the data, the gap between the rich and the poor is the widest in the U.S. of any of the industrialized nations. You look at the real wages, how they've fallen in the last year and in the last several years. It's one after another. So this is, this is the kind of behavior. So what they do, you see, is, it, you know, the word as we say, it, justice means J-U-S-T-U-S, just us. Because they're so impotent, because they have no power, the police, what they do is they go after the low-hanging fruit. They bust the chops of everyday people while guys like John the Slime Corzine slide free. Like all of these mega bankers, the Goldman Sachs gang, the J.P. Morgan Chase criminals, every one of them have paid major fines. But of course, under the agreement in a fascist state, you don't have to admit or deny your, your, that you're guilty. All you do is pay the fine and say goodbye. We'll see you next time. By the way, we're going to have a dinner with Obama. You're invited, $40,000. You don't see any of them doing jail time. So what they do, and by the way, this all ties together, Alex. Just like they make a big deal out of these stupid drug busts that they make and make a big deal out of it, you know, like the war on drugs is going well, and then this Enviro classic thing that you just pulled out. They do the same thing with terrorism. They're losers at every level. But what they do is they trump up little things that would have amounted to hardly anything, considering a country of 312 million people, like the underwear bomber. Dun, da, da, da. You know, this freaky little kid, whether it was a setup or not, even if he was able to ignite the thing, he, he needed an electronic ignition. What would it have done? Well, you know, a plane full of people would have died, right? Hey, how many Palestinians were killed a couple of weeks ago? How many people in the Congo are being killed? How many people in Yemen? How many people in Syria? What I'm saying is they use these little tiny cases to give themselves credibility to keep taking away more of our rights and to stamp down on us. That's right. That's the total theater. And it turns out the government, U.S. government, got him on the airplane. It comes out in Congress, and the congressmen go, let's just not talk about this, so they can sell naked body scanners so Chertoff can make some money. And here's land of the free, home of the brave, on its knees, begging in fear, grope my wife, they say, you know, molest the children, all the TSA being busted every day, molesting, murdering, killing, stealing, b child porn, total scum that wants to, to take this job. And land of the free, home of the brave, the media tells us, says we want proctology exams at the airport because we're so scared of Mutala, the underwear bomber. The truth is the public on average isn't scared. Yeah, but it's this, it's this giant illusion 
uh, and now they're trying to harass the Amish and people with farms in their backyard or, or, or in the countryside or gardens in their backyard. I mean, it's just a bunch of criminals. It's just still shocking to me just how criminal government and the corporations that control it have gotten. I mean, these are real sacks of crap. Oh, they really are. And now we have an election coming up. And it's going to be what? Between Romney and Obama? It's not the lesser of two evils. It's the greater of two stooges. That's all it is. These are no choices. As I said to you the last time we spoke, I'm pushing for a voter's strike. Because to me, voting for a lesser of two evils in a criminal organization, you are an accessory to the crime. The crime being committed against democracy and freedom in America. If you vote for one of the two members of the two-headed one-party system, to me, you are an accessory to the crime. And it's a crime that that's all we have to choose from. Gerald, you bring me to my next point here with you in the limited time we have today. Um, but before we get to my next point on Obama impeachment, I've got to say, while you've been talking, you were gracious enough to send us an early copy of the new Trends Journal coming out, and you have got one of the most amazing, not just graphic artists, but artists overall. I'd like to pay to get some of those blown up and hang them in my office. I mean, who is doing the, who is doing this artwork uh, for the uh, Trends Journal? I mean, it, it, it's some of the best stuff I've seen. Uh, Anthony Frieda, he's brilliant. And, uh, and G Eugene Gregan, our fine artist. So yeah, Anthony Frieda is off the charts. We just give him an idea and he goes with it. And unlike working for other people, you know, like in, in the, you know, like the New York Times has his stuff, but others, there's no art director over his shoulder, you know, telling this color isn't right, don't put this there, don't do that. He has the complete freedom, but plus, he's on the same page as we are. He sees what's going on, and, it, and, and, it, and he's as sad as we are about it. So it's really expressing it through the art, and by the way, Art is the way of finding, part of the way of finding the true meaning of the human spirit. And that's why the art is so important. That's right. The truth is evident in these graphics. It jumps off that this isn't even satire or Kafka-esque. It has really gotten to this absurdist, bizarro level. But it's a paradox of the old free republic is still there to a certain extent, with this parallel tyranny growing and we now see the old republic fading away. My God, once the old republic is set like the sun, this is going to be a cold, dark night. But the truth we put out are like little suns. And, and, and those truths stand out. So now is the time to get our torches in the night and not hide in our little hovels. Like Alexander Solzhenitsyn said, waiting for the knock at the door, it's time to politically and in the info war and physically in defense later if we have to, to get our torches and march on the enemy, to stop just waiting while this happens. Yeah, amen, amen. And that's, you see, in the midst of this chaos, by the way, that's when the greatest creativity comes about. That's why this kind of art explodes. And that's why the people's creativity can change this. The future is not predetermined. Anyone that says that you do not create the future is trying to rob you of your dignity, your self-respect, and the God that lives within you. And, that's right. And, that's right. All those so talented liberals, I'm sorry to interrupt, it's just it's pure genius. All those talented liberals who are well-meaning people who exposed Bush with the cartoons, the graphics, the too stupid to be president guy, uh, uh, Dude was just reminding me, they're all gone. I've contacted some of them and I said, why aren't you exposing Obama? And they go, well, we know he's bad, but at least he's not a Republican. And I'm like, shame on you. You know, it's like if Mitt Romney gets in and continues this, conservatives better go after him. This is beyond left, right. This is about good and evil, right and wrong. And if people can't recognize that we're in deep trouble, it, 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 it's aiding and abetting pure evil. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, you're, you're, you're right on. I agree with you. But and this is the opportunity now. Never before has it become so transparent that this is nothing more than the presidential reality show, another made-for-TV cheap thriller. And, and look at it, the last 27 Republican debates, who held them? ABC, CBS, NBC, and Fox, and MSNBC. Who got to ask the questions? Brian Williams, Diane Sawyer, all of the prostitutes from a long history of prostitution. 
They get, it's all one club. There is, and the people are gulled into believing that they're watching democracy unfold in front of them as they're watching a two-bit debate take place where the game is rigged, you're told where to stand, they already know how much time they're going to allow each person to ask the question, and everybody saw with their own eyes and could hear with their own ears how Ron Paul was marginalized from day one. They pushed him to the sides. They gave him the least amount of time to talk. So the whole game is being rigged. And that anyone, as I said, that supports it, they deserve what they get. But on the other hand, the vacuum is so big. Everybody could see through this now. That's right. And you have such a cheap show that you have a Mitt Romney and Obama we could fill it with greatness, and this is the opportunity to do it. That's my next point. Because if we don't, we will lose. Uh, well said. That's my next point, and I want to give you closing comments here on any other topics or points that we uh, haven't gotten to yet, Gerald. Gerald, we've put out a 10-minute video titled Obama Impeachment 2012, and it's red-linked up at Infowars.com. I, I launched it today uh, a few hours ago. There's already a huge buzz on it. And it's Sean Stone, Oliver Stone's son, cut some audio. It was, it was his idea to do this. We've been pushing for the impeachment, for launching a war without congressional approval, all the other things he's done. The video breaks it down. But, but, but my point, and, and Sean's point, and I want your take on this, is even if we don't get the impeachment, and of course it's been introduced in the House, in a Jones's uh, resolution on North Carolina, we impeach him in the court of public opinion. We call it for what it is, a fraud, a hoax, that, that, that we're aware and we're not just acquiescing. We stand up and voice the fact that we say this is a fraud and a lie and that we know it's criminal. And instead of having the establishment push Coney 2012, that's this new left-wing military activism, this is a true grassroots movement. Uh, what do you say about pushing for an impeachment of Obama? And then Romney, too, if he gets in and does the same stuff. Well, I think, it's, I think the, any pressure you put on him in any way is, is, is appropriate. And also to, to expose the, the entire system for being the fraud that it is. Again, we do not have a representative form of democracy. We have a gang of 535 congressmen and senators in total telling all of us what to do, and the only people that they represent are the people that give them money or that have a lot of power. So I think it's great what you're doing, to keep putting pressure on the fraud, and that's what we need. Uh, Gerald Salente, there's so much more we could cover, but uh, give us an idea of what's coming out in tomorrow's big quarterly trends journal, what comes up in the weekly and daily alerts, and any other tidbits uh, here. You've got the floor. Well, the, the focus of this trends journal is really how the future is unfolding and how you better be taking action now because you're not going to be able to take it later. And, of course, we do a, there's a... We have a new contributor, Nomi Prinz, who is actually a former managing director of Goldman Sachs. Again, like Paul Craig Roberts, one of our other contributors, you know, there's, that have seen, and like myself, that have been on the other side and see what it is and have moved into a different direction. So there's a lot of economic news on how to prepare for the future, a lot of geopolitical news, and what you can do to help change the future. So this is probably one of our most important trends journals ever written. Amazing. Uh, just in a personal note, for those that don't know, most viewers do, you were robbed by MF Global and John Corzine. It's everything we said six months ago has been now confirmed, as you know, but to remind people briefly, he did lie under oath. He was exposed by Duffy, the head of the CME group, for lying. Nothing happened. The memos are now out that, of course, the CEO ordered the money taken. It did go to J.P. Morgan in London. And uh, he's been caught lying open and shut, admitted now for three weeks. Nothing. I mean, if they can get away with that, I mean, it, it is a new level of just open thievery. And I, and I think you're right. The reason they're doing it is none of them want to have to pay stuff out when they steal it. That signifies they're getting ready to start stealing everything. Uh, in your own personal case, give us uh, your take on that, Gerald. Well, that's exactly it. You know, that one, one phone call, they needed $200 million really quickly, and they couldn't get it anywhere. So they don't know where it came from. What do you think it came from, petty cash? Of course they knew where it came from. They took it out of segregated accounts like mine. And it's not only MF Global. This is going on everywhere. Once a system collapses, you're screwed. There's nobody there to save you. And that's the message of all this, and that's what I learned from it. 
And that's why I am saying, and that's what this Trends Journal is about, we are looking at a collapse of the global economic system, particularly in the United States and Europe. And when this thing collapses, we believe there's going to be an economic martial law. El Presidente of Los Estados Unidos has already put into, into play all of the laws, guidelines, and executive orders that put them in position to take over. That's right. And they're doing the same thing in Europe. That's right. Same game plan in Latin America, Asia. All the same bankers. They've got all the ducks in the row. They're telling us this. Uh, we know that Paulson told them martial law in 08 if they didn't do what they said. I mean, it's on. I mean, my gosh, this is incredible. Yes, it's on. And people better, and again, they, we are using this Trayvon Martin. It's been taking up all of the news time, and none of what, what's going on is being recognized. So other than, you know, every day, one of the, the first site I go on to is your site to see the news that the news isn't covering. And most people are getting brainwashed by the whitewash and the hogwash that the prostitutes are selling, so they can't see what's going on. Amazing. Gerald, things are moving so fast. Uh, perhaps I can get you on the radio uh, Thursday or Friday or sometime next week to do a full hour. Uh, we'll uh, talk to you here right at the end of the show and find out. Guys, off air, will you ask Gerald to talk to his great crew and see uh, when he can come on before? Because I know you're about to uh, leave the country soon, right, for a few days? Yes, yep, yep. All right, well, let's I'll get gone, I'll be gone. I'll be gone. I'll be back near the end of the month. Okay, well, perhaps we can get you on before that happens because this is so important. Thank you, Gerald Salente. Thank you. Uh, folks, uh, that's it for this edition. Uh, hopefully, we'll still be here tomorrow. By the way, on our YouTube channel, we've been checking it in the last 30 minutes. I've never seen this at YouTube. Our other videos are playing. They're not letting the impeach Obama video play. And uh, either that means it can't handle the traffic, which is bull. You know, I've had 100,000 views in one hour before on a video. Or they're censoring it. Guys, show them that. Hit play on this here. And we're doing this on multiple computers, and it's not playing it. I have never seen it do that. And the other videos are playing. So uh, I don't know what's going on with that, but impeach Obama 2012. It's gone particularly viral since we launched it about two hours ago, a little under two hours ago. All right, I want to thank Gerald Salente. Be sure to go to trendsjournal.com and subscribe. Support us, because we're under a lot of attacks and stuff I won't even get into. And spread the word, 15-day uh, free trial at prisonplanet.tv. And when these videos are out there free on the web later, please pay it forward. Email it. Tell people verbally about it. Show people at work about it, at church about it, uh, your Facebook, your Twitter. Help get this info out because the system openly wants to start censoring folks. I should have brought that up with Gerald. And don't forget, you can submit videos until the end of the month to win a $5,000 prize and get a shot in the running to be a reporter right here at the InfoWars.com Command Center in Austin, Texas. Until tomorrow night, I'm Alex Jones signing off.